So on top of Europe and China, there were some pretty big developments in the Islamic world in the 15th and 16th centuries, and historians consider this to be a sort of second golden age for Islam. And driving this new golden age were really four new Islamic empires. And these are new empires, but really they're the successor states of older empires. So I'm just going to give a quick introduction to these and we'll look at them in more depth as we proceed throughout the unit. Uh, so we're going to look at the Ottoman Empire, the Safavid Empire, the Songhai Empire, and the Mughal Empire. So the biggest of these new Islamic empires is the Ottoman Empire, and the Ottomans will actually stay in power until the 20th century. They're going to become a major player in the First World War. The leaders of the Ottoman Empire were Turkic people, and if we remember from the last unit, they were the third group to convert to Islam after the Arabs and the Persians. So with the Ottoman Empire, you have the emergence of the Turkic people as the dominant people in the Islamic world. So you had Turkic people ruling over Arabs in an Islamic state. The political leaders of the Ottoman Empire were the Sultans, and the Ottoman Sultans would eventually add the term Caliph to their title. So if you remember from last unit, Caliph meant that you were the successor of the Prophet Muhammad, so they essentially claimed that they were the leaders of the Islamic world and the rightful successors of the Abbasids. On top of seeing themselves as the successors of the Abbasids, the Ottomans also brought an end to a weakened Byzantine Empire and took over the city of Constantinople, uh, so that's when they changed the name to Istanbul. The Byzantine Empire was really the successor of the Roman Empire, so the Ottoman Sultans also viewed themselves as the rightful successors of the Roman Empire. Geographically, the heartland of the Ottoman Empire was Anatolia, or modern-day Turkey, but the Ottomans ruled over a much larger geographic area, and this included Arabia, North Africa, and much of Eastern Europe. So really, a lot of the territory that was controlled by the Eastern Roman Empire. Not everybody living in the Ottoman Empire were Muslims either. Uh, there were many Christians living in the empire, and the rise of the empire was something that, rightfully so, made Western Europeans nervous. To the east of the Ottomans, another Islamic state uh, emerged in modern-day Iran, uh, and this was known as the Safavid Empire. Uh, so this bordered the Ottoman Empire, and the major difference between the Ottoman Empire and the Safavid Empire were that the Ottomans practiced Sunni Muslim, uh, which the majority of Muslims at that time and still to the present day practiced, and the Safavid Empire uh, imposed Shia Islam. So. This goes back to the question of who was the rightful successor of the Prophet Muhammad, and Sunnis believed that that leader uh, of the Muslim community should be selected by people from the community. Uh, Shiites believed that the leader should come from the bloodline of Muhammad and his nephew Ali. So Shia Islam has really come to define Persian culture. Today, 95% of the population of uh, Iran are Shiite Muslims, uh, even though maybe only 15% of Muslims are Shiite. So it's important to note these two bordering empires, uh, they had Islam in common, but there were hostilities between the two groups. Uh, between the years 1534 and 1639, there were wars erupting between the two empires uh, over both territory and over religious differences. So the Sunni-Shiite split uh, is something that still exists in the 20th So the Ottomans and the Safavids emerged really in the heartland of Islamic civilization. But two other important Islamic empires emerged more in the fringes of the Islamic world. The first is the Songhai Empire. Uh, and this is a West African kingdom. Like the older kingdoms of Mali and Ghana, Songhai controlled the Trans-Saharan Golden Salt trade. So the leaders of the Songhai Empire were Muslims, uh, but the majority of people living in the empire weren't Muslims. Um, some of the leaders would eventually make the pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, Mecca was then under Ottoman rule, and the Songhai kings uh, were granted the title Caliph of the Land of the Blacks. And finally, in India, another Turkic Islamic empire emerged uh, at the beginning of the 16th century, and they're known as the Mughal Empire. And the Mughal Empire is similar to the Songhai uh, because they ruled over a 
mostly non-Muslim population. So the majority of people in the Mughal Empire were Hindus. Um, so there's sort of a parallel between the Ottoman Empire as well, because a lot of people living in the Ottoman Empire were Christians. It's important to remember that India isn't like China. It wasn't unified very often in its history. And the Mughals are one of the rare cases where there actually is unification in the Indian Peninsula. And this unity would serve as the foundation for imperial rule uh, from Great Britain later on. Uh, so as we move on through the unit, we'll see how these four new Islamic empires, the Ottomans, the Safavids, the Songhai, and the Mughals, uh, will together bring a new golden age for Islam. This is the end of episode 15, the 15th century world. Thanks for listening.